My name is Daniel, aka Hashtips, and welcome to my channel. Today, we've got yet again Marco Shivam on the call on this panel, and we're going to be looking at this new Azuki, um, you know, update. And when I'm talking about Azuki, it's really the ERC-721A contract that is now being updated. And, you know, we've built a lot of tools around this kind of technology, and most people just want to update immediately. We're going to talk about what is the shortfalls of updating to the latest library always, but I'm going to hand this over to Marco and Shivam in this call. First of all, uh, welcome guys to the channel, and I'm looking forward to our chat today. Hi, Daniel. Thank you very much for having us here. Yeah, thank you for having us here, Daniel. Uh, it's a pleasure, guys. Always a pleasure. Now, I, I guess the first question I want to know, Marco, is what is this all about? Why are we making this video and why is it so important? Uh, please, please explain to us. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, uh, I, we are talking about version 4.0.0 of the contract. Um, so just starting from this concept, uh, it's a major update. So what should ex you should expect from a major upgrade is uh, uh, breaking changes. So something that might not be backward compatible with the old code that you have been using with version 3, for example. And that's the main reason why we're doing this video here, because a lot of people, uh, uh, as soon as the um, this new version came up, they started upgrading the, the collection project um, to this 4.0 version, and they started complaining about stuff breaking, okay? So that's the reason why we're gonna talk about um, what can happen when you're dealing with dependencies and if it's a good idea to always stick with the newest version or maybe other strategies that uh, big companies or successful projects uh, uh, have in order to keep everything working correctly. I know also Shivam uh, has a great experience in developing tools and working with libraries. So maybe um, Shivam, you also have some, uh, some points uh, and some ideas about that. Yes, so I was just thinking, I mean, the usual reasons why we keep, keep ourselves from updating the latest version is we need to try and test it in a more robust way and, and build it before actually jumping onto upgrading it on the fly, right? So when you say a major or a breaking change, that implies it's going to tear your system, existing system apart, and then really you need to rebuild it or, or you need to make some revolution changes that would drive your next build. But this has been happening in other libraries as well, Marco. How's this different in uh, a, a decentralized world like blockchain smart contract? Yeah, um, yeah. thank you for the question. I think that the basic concept is exactly the same. So um, also, uh, Daniel, you perfectly know that on blockchain, some things are different. Code is final, so once you deploy, uh, you can change that most of the times. And we're going to take a look into this uh, also with this uh, update. Um, but yeah, I think this is something that applies to every type of code, every type of library, not only blockchain. Uh, do you agree, Daniel? I absolutely agree. I mean, that's why we've got that package.json dependencies file to make sure that, you know, you don't put just carrot signs in there and take the latest versions. Uh, we really need to sometimes as developers make sure that your piece of code works with a specific version at that time. So um, there are complications just trying to use the latest version of everything. And, you know, most pieces of programs, uh, big, big projects don't work like that. You know, you might find that some change might be a breaking change downstream. And that's why we're looking at this. And it's good. You know, I I'm not against updates. It's just in this video, we're just going to cover and, and talk about should you immediately use the latest version, right? Marco, you, you touched upon upgradable contracts and, and kind of final code, right? We know about this kind of diamond proxies and things happening in the blockchain world, which could lead to upgradability uh, in smart contracts. You touched on it briefly. Would you like to say a few things on this kind of update or just in general about that? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, um, the version 4.0 of this contract, the ERC-721A, is mainly about that. So 
the guys in the team are doing an awesome job in upgrading and optimizing the code, but the main, uh, the centerpiece of this update is the adoption of Diamond Storage. And Diamond Storage is related to upgradability of contracts. There is a, a concept that uh, was uh, brought to the blockchain by the Open Zeppelin team in the past that there was uh, there was upgradable contracts. It's not the same as Diamond. I uh, I don't have a very uh, deep knowledge about these specific tasks. You know, uh, blockchain and programming in general covers a lot of different topics and things. So we can know everything about everything. We still have to dive deep into this. And that's also why we, we are waiting for uh, before updating. But uh, yeah, from my understanding, uh, the upgradable contracts were uh, these first uh, attempt by the Open Zeppelin team to create contracts that could be upgraded graded and some functionalities could be changed in, after the deployment. And uh, there is this other uh, standard, which is the diamonds, uh, which are um, pushing that further. So what the Azuki team did, uh, as far as I know, they implemented this diamond storage um, thing and they added that to the contract so that collections using ERC uh, 721A from now on, from now on, will be able to uh, upgrade their contracts in the future. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you um, ever heard about that. Maybe Shivam, you 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 know something about this kind of things. Uh, um, do you have any opinion about that? Uh, well, first of all, I like the idea of upgradability being added to blockchain, when, especially when the uh, chain is immutable. Right, you don't want to end up in a space where you have a piece of code that you found a bug in it and then you cannot replace it. So definitely we need the opportunity to be for it to be upgraded. But the only challenge that I see uh, in this case, and uh, I, I just thought about it is, uh, you're, whenever you're upgrading a library in an NPM package or, or in your own project, right? You are just uh, using it for your a particular product or your application whereas when you upgrade your contract you would be putting it upgrading it for everyone that's using your uh, information or your contract right so this upgrade might not just break your system but any system that's using that contract could be broken by this upgrade as well what do you think daniel about that uh, thought well i mean if, if the standard stays the same uh, you know, ERC functions and so on, which we'll get to just in a, in a second. But it's interesting what you say that, yes, uh, you know, upgradability for me is wonderful in, in blockchain because so many times people push out code, there's bugs in it, they leave it, someone else copies that, they introduce new bugs. So it's it's some way good. And upgradability in blockchain works way different than just updating code, right? You have to kind of, linked to a new smart contract with a new set of tools. Uh, when we talk about the diamond storage, I think they're most probably going to store, I don't know how this works, we'll dive into that now, but probably st store the NFT separate from the logic about it and kind of swap that in and out if you need a whole new contract wrapper around that storage, kind of keeping those NFTs or that storage of the UNs always there or the mappings. It, it, it's all it's all re irrelevant to me kind of uh, where we go with this right now um, my biggest question is this is under breaking changes so Marco is there any is there any breaking changes that you foresee you know happening in the in the near future with anything that we've done before that we've actually implemented before yeah, so first of all, um, we are relying on the ERC721 contract uh, a lot. It's the base of, uh, of our project for the collection now since uh, a, um, a few versions uh, now. So uh, it's really important to understand that that's uh, kind of the foundation of the, of the project. And we built on top of that. So it's really important to know that if they change something that it's breaking from the past, uh, stuff may break on our project as well. So you can't just uh, update the dependency and be fine with that. So uh, for, in this case, uh, I am I know that updating is breaking our contract, so you should not do it unless you really know how to fix all the stuff that are breaking. And um, yeah, apart from that, uh, I think that you should always 
think about the purpose of your collection and your contract. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it's always better to stick with something that is known and has been proven to be stable enough in the past before switching to uh, something completely new because bugs can always be there. And of course, in this case, you might be able to upgrade, but uh, you also have to, to have a completely new set of skills in order to, or, uh, to handle an upgradable contract. That's not the same thing. That's not always easy, okay? Yeah. So uh, I think the main concern is, uh, and I would ask also your opinion, is it's not about uh, what the feature is, but do you need that? Do you really need an upgradable contract for uh, your specific collection? Because I think uh, maybe 99% of the time, that's not the case. I mean, just to give, just before we go there, guys, just to give everyone peace of mind, um, if your contracts are already on the blockchain, you have NFT collections, and we mentioning things might break, it's nothing to do with everything that's there already. Uh, it's things going forward. So you can have peace of mind that everything on the blockchain is, is as it is. Uh, what we are discussing here is just a new version of update of a, you know, the contract standard. Um, but yeah, Shivam, uh, talking about upgradability, right, uh, and the the benefits of it as well. If we have something that's so upgradable and so changeable, then we lose the functionality of the you know definite source of truth of the blockchain, and that's what we need to just be careful with with new standards like these, trying to manipulate and upgrade everything to the to that point. I don't know to what extent this goes to. We'll do more investigations, and I think it's brilliant in one way. We just need to be cautious. But um, yeah, Shivam, what do you think about this new update, man? Uh, I'm curious about it. I think it'll be helpful for the people who are building their collection from scratch. But uh, I'm just a bit skeptical about uh, the people that are already have their collections out there and are curious to upgrade it, right? Like we discussed. I also think it's fun to experiment uh, with these tools and uh, figure out whether you really need it or not. Like Marco said earlier, because uh, there are chances where you might not need the upgradability at all. Uh, for, let's say for an art collection, right, where you uh, need you already have that metadata and uh, you already have put all the pieces together before building the contract, right? In that case, you really do not need that upgrade. Always keep things more basic than you need. You know, there's this thing yeah. that because there's they doesn't mean you need those tools. You might never need them. And if you just want to focus on basic things, and we really try and educate the community on the best way of doing a collection, the simplest way, the easiest way. So imagine we add this extra complexity of upgradability. You really need to understand as a developer on how to use these functions. And you can't just willy-nilly do that if you don't have a deeper understanding of how the blockchain and these contracts work. So that being said, Marco, thank you for introducing this to us and highlighting these things. I know you are very, working very hard to implement some of this uh, with time, but only time will tell if we will ever upgrade, you know, to this new uh, version. Is that correct in saying? Yeah, absolutely. Our main goal is to provide with the uh, easiest to use tools uh, for most of the use cases and also uh, with, um, uh, yeah, our goal is to create something that might be useful and fair and awesome for the end users as well. Uh, so as a collection owner, I think everyone should always care about their uh, users and we are doing that as well. And that's the reason why we try to keep everything solid, uh, strong uh, as always. So that's our main goal basically. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, I just want to thank you guys so much for coming up on the panel today. It's a lovely topic, very complex, very controversial than the usual uh, topics that we talk about, but it's necessary to discuss these heavier, deeper concepts uh, around what we're doing in the development space. I've noticed uh, all of us are wearing black. We are now the men in black. We all have shiny foreheads from the lights in the room. And <laughs> with that note, <laughs> I'm going to end this video. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. And for everyone watching, We'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.